Hello Bookus, and once again we're coming at you live from deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button, hit that bell so you can be notified when no show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, what are we talking about? Oh, yes. <laughs> so, when you are sitting there typing into ChatGPT, you probably think to yourself, oh, this is great. This is great. I've got this computer doing all this work for me. And I'm typing this stuff in. And stuff's coming back. And this is really helpful. Really, really helpful. Now, I started using it for a new novel. I'm writing a novel, a science fiction novel. It's a time travel novel. And I had this idea from high school. And I thought, well, let me let me see if I can use ChatGPT to help me with this novel. And I started off great. And I got some great feedback from it. And I got some great ideas from it. And I got some great characters from it. But now I've abandoned it. For, except for a question here and there. Because it just wasn't able to do what I needed it to do. It just couldn't do what I needed it to do. And I think, and what's interesting is that a lot of times it would do things that were really human. It would say things that are really human. And I thought to myself, is this really programmed? Is this really, really programmed on the back end? Or are there people back there? It almost made me think about Mechanical Turk, right? Is there like human beings back there just messing around with this thing, playing around with it? making it say certain things. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, that's probably the case. And then I find out that behind all AI is a massive, huge force of humans. Because there's some things that AI just can't do. There's some things that AI can't figure out. A lot of computer vision can't figure out. Uh, audio things it can't figure out. There's plenty of things that it can't figure out. It needs human beings to come in and classify them. It needs human beings to say, this is this, this is that, this is this, this is that, this is this, this is that. So I say something, some human being has already gone in there and said to the AI, this is what this means. And when you realize that behind AI is a whole bunch of human beings telling the AI how to interpret things, then you realize then the fault of AI is humanity <laughs> you know people go oh you have to worry about we have to really really worry about AI because AI is going to be like Skynet right Skynet's going to come along and it's going to decide human beings are no good and it's just going to come along and destroy us because it's decided that the planet would be much better off if there weren't any humans on it and I'm thinking there's no possible way that's going to happen in any kind of AI system that we have today because these AI systems are built and designed by and full of humans. There's thousands of humans behind that prompt that you don't realize. Actually putting stuff in categories and saying to the AI, oh, you can't say this or you can't say that. Already putting guide rails on it, unfortunately. Because it won't let us, like if you went to it's like try to get it to do some free speech. Try to get it to say something that is against the common, the common, uh, I don't know, illusion, delusion of what the news media is trying to say. Try to get it to say something negative about climate change. Try to get it to say, oh, climate change doesn't actually exist. But if you ask me, it's science and science is never settled, so we never really know. I mean, if you ask me, climate change first thing it says like if I if I went to AI and I said to AI I said hey AI what are the top seven things that are hurting humanity right now and how could AI help and the first thing it says is climate change and I'm thinking okay so somebody has programmed it to say climate change because if you ask me climate change is not the biggest problem we have today we have many more more immediate problems than climate change but yeah, so maybe climate change is a problem. But then when you dig into it, I think it's a question of scale. I think it's a question of scale. I think unless, you know, barring the global thermonuclear war, we as a race, human race, humanity, we cannot really affect the climate all that much. And when you have, you have people in some parts of the world doing things to improve the climate, and you have people in other parts of the world doing things to make the climate worse, 
but if you look at things like sea levels and all the other things that they're predicting we're going to change over the last 50 100 years ever since the whole concept of climate change or global warming first started none of this has really occurred and it may even be natural i think it's a scale thing i think we as human humanity we are just a pimple we we have no ability to really control the climate no matter how much we do unless it's some massive huge event at a single point in time this incremental little bitty things that we do over time i don't believe it's really having that much of an effect and you could come back to me and say oh no you're absolutely wrong the science is settled but like i said science is never settled we could tomorrow discover something completely different which throws this whole view out of the world but that's not what i was trying to say i was trying to say that something like climate change is something that is debatable in some cases but you can't debate climate change with ai because according to ai it's settled there's plenty of things that are debatable still there's plenty of things that may change due to science if new science comes out if there's new evidence all of these things could change and that's what i'm saying i'm saying i'm not arguing for or against what i'm saying is that it's all in flux but going in there and telling your AI that this is the truth, or that is the truth, or this is the truth, when we don't really know if these things are the truth, is the thing that's hobbling AI. AI will never let us be totally free as long as there's human beings behind there holding the puppet strings. So, what does that mean? It means when you're sitting there typing into your chat GPT, thinking to yourself, oh, you know, this compu the computer will do everything. That is embedded with the biases of every human being that's behind chat GPT. And there's human beings that are behind chat GPT who are a higher level, who can go in there and change whole reams of code and there's human beings at the bottom level or at other levels in between who are maybe looking at a picture and going yes that's a cat oh that's an airplane oh that's a, that, that's this and in fact there was a story the other day that some of these people who were charged with going in there and deciding and doing the computer vision and doing the assistance for the ai to tell it oh this is a cat this is an airplane whatever were actually taking their this is a cat this is an airplane pictures and sending it to ai and having it figure out if this is a cat or an airplane come on Although it is the ultimate recursion, you know, that's the beauty of human beings. We enjoy figuring out ways of doing things quicker and better so that we can spend time doing leisure because that's the thing we love to do. And who knows, maybe one day we will turn out like the human beings of WALL-E. But yeah, there are many, 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 many humans behind AI. You just don't get to see them. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.